So one of your problems if you're trying to do um, timing is to try and get a reliable reference. So the old way of doing it, people would make little wires that would connect to the screws or whatever, but they can get bent and put in different positions. So I'm looking for something that I can either align the fan with on the casing or the flywheel with on the casing to use for my timing reference. Now you don't actually have to use the fan for doing the strobing, it is okay to use just the flywheel if you want, um, as long as you don't rev the bike and rev the bike, because obviously with no fa cooling fan it's not going to cool very well. Now there's a convenient thing that I've noticed with the small frame one, which is that SIP supply you with these fancy screws here and these um, aluminium washers to hold the stator plate down and they supply you with three and what came up really convenient was the fact that there's a, a fourth screw hole up here on this casing and I can use that as a reference point for my flywheel. So what I have here now is with this screw in here is a, a reference that's almost touching the flywheel so there's no chance of parallax error where you have one thing in front of another like the hands of a clock and you look at it at different angles and you get different times. When you've got something that's right next to the flywheel there's no chance of parallax error so I can now use that as a, a reliable point to make my markings um, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the buzz wangle to, uh, to set the timing marks on this. So for those that haven't seen this before, this is the buzz wangle. This is basically a mounting tool for all different sorts of ignitions um, for an inclinometer. Basically, it couldn't be any easier and it couldn't be any quicker to do timing with this. So what the buzz wangle does is it mounts into the flywheel extractor thread. So there's a, a mount for um, this uh, vapor flywheel and you can lock it with a a bolt inside so that there's absolutely no chance of it moving or the timing changing. So I'm just going to lock that uh, bolt onto the end of the crankshaft and now that's on there rigid. So that provides a mount for our buzz wangleometer, which is that. And that sticks onto there magnetically and now you've got something that's absolutely rigidly attached to the crankshaft couldn't get a better or simpler way of uh, doing the timing. So the next part of the puzzle is also supplied. Now this is a, um, a, a threaded fitting for the spark plug thread with an adjustable stop. So I've got this set at the moment so that the bolt's nearly all the way out which turns out to be about the right for this particular small frame because of the angle of the head. So this is again universal designed to fit everything. So I'll just quickly put that into the uh, spark plug hole and then we can use it as a stop. So all we do is now we turn it until it reaches the stop, we press the on off button twice to zero it and then we turn it clockwise and what will happen is at the clockwise point it will read, it says 111.1 degrees. So that's how many degrees there are between one stop to the next. So we know that halfway in between there is top dead centre. So half of that is say 55.5. So now I'm going to take the spark plug stop out so that the crank can rotate all the way around again. So if I go to 55.5, okay, so a 55.5 is there. Now ordinarily you'd make a top dead centre marking but you don't need to with this system. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick 25 degrees before that as our firing point. So all I'm going to do is zero the meter while the, the flow is here once, twice and then I'm going to go back 25 degrees from here. So if you look carefully, I've already made a, a mark at the 25 degrees in line with that head on the top of the flywheel. So that we know 
is our firing point. So when I come now to strobe it, all I've got to do is look for that mark to line up with there. So this is my trusty Gunson timing light. Um, you can power it off a 12 volt battery. This one has got um, advanced retard, which doesn't work with all ignitions. So basically I've got this taped off at zero because you can figure out what your timing is by using the dial on a, a system that runs off a battery. Um, but if you're running a system that runs um, self-generates, it can throw the, the electronics in these off. So it's basically safest just to put it to zero and then use it like a um, traditional timing light. So that's three and a half thousand revs there. And you can see that the mark is a little bit off. So yeah, what you could see there was that the mark was at three and a half thousand revs was about there. So which means that the the firing point is clockwise of where we want, which means that the stator is also clockwise of where we want. So to get the timing mark where we need to, we've got to turn the stator plate anti-clockwise. And then the timing mark will also follow anti-clockwise. Only looks like two or three degrees, so it shouldn't be really impossible for me to achieve. Just a matter of taking the flywheel off, adjusting the stator slightly, and then putting it back on again. Right now, so we're going to give it another go. That's 3,500 revs, and it's spot on. So that was at 3,500 revs that I had that and it was absolutely on the money on there. So now I know that the, uh, the state is in the right position. So all I had to do was just undo it and move it around. Good part of these screws is that they are, um, you can probably tighten them from the outside with the right Allen key. So one of the things I had to do with this is because I've got extra material here where we've um, used uh, chemical metal to uh, basically make sure there was no little breakthroughs of the porting that we did to match the, the quattrini. You had to cut away the top of the um, the stator plate. That's quite normal. We used to have to do that on all the old race stators we used to use as well. Um, now, if you were to buy um, this SIP version that was done by Fabry, what you'd end up with is a stator plate that's already pre-machined for um, large engine cases, and you also end up with a, um, a different fan that's more suitable for high-end engines. Um, with this one here now, what I've done, having strobed it, there's a little lump on the casing just there that is used for um, marking out the stator positions. What I need to do is to make a little dot punch in alignment with it so that when we go to strip the engine down, we don't need to, uh, we don't need to do this every time. We just put it back there. So that's that easy job done now and um, we're all right to put the flywheel back on. I've put an extra screw in. They supplied three of these screws with these special washers. Um, I was worried about the slater coming loose. You can't tell whether the screws have actually secured it tightly or whether the screws are just bottoming out. So just for safety's sake, it's a belt and braces thing. Uh, rather than just these three that they supplied, I've put in a fourth one, which is a bolt with a steel washer. So the slater plate held four times now should be um, secure enough. Um, happy with my timing mark that I've set to 25 degrees at three and a half thousand revs, which is what I was instructed would work. And uh, now I can put the, the flywheel back on. Right, last thing to do is to do the uh, flywheel nut up to uh, 40, first of all 45 newton meters, 60 newton meters it says. I wonder if they meant 45 to 50. But 50 60 is the uh, end of my. Uh, that's as tight as mine will go. That really is tight. That's going nowhere. Alright, okay, sorted. We're ready to go racing. <laughs>